Din Tenye, at the Pavilion in Adrobrach. Okay. In our meeting agenda, the first point is to welcome you and call to order the town hall. So, welcome. Thank you for being here. We have a lot of information and we want to share it with you. So, you are informed, which is uh, one of the points of the supervisor's committees. David, tiene... Excuse me. Still, there are like 1,200 which has not been answered. 
remember that you have to fill out your paperwork to be in good status with the law. So please follow up. You just have to call uh, Juan Manuel Perez. Uh, Juan Manuel Perez is our guy in our office in Mexicali. In customer service, you can get his email so you can get in contact with him and he will satisfy all your questions. For the ones who have um, individual trust, same thing, you have to contact Juan Manuel because HSBC is going out of business in the trust business. So uh, if you stay in HSBC, there will be the moment when nobody will take care of you at HSBC. And this is not El Dorado, this is not just San Felipe, this is all around the country. There are more than, I can say more than 50,000 trusts which will not be taken care of. Right now, they are running the department with three people, you can imagine. It's a crazy house. We have been in contact with them constantly. Uh, Jesus Solos is in contact with them. So they are helping us to make the transfer as easy as possible. But please contact Juan Manuel Perez if you are in the master trust or in the individual trust and he will take care of the steps that have to be followed to help you out and be in good position. Okay. Juan Manuel Perez. The original one was HSBC, the new one is, you can abbreviate BIM, which is Banco Inmobiliario Mexicano, like BIM. Okay, the next point is safety and security. One of the safety issues we are confronting is the uh, overall vehicles. Right now they are banned from the seaside. And we have received several commentaries about that, but mainly the people who live here, I can say that I have received a lot of very good comments on that. Because right now it's a lot quieter, it's less movement. There's still some, uh, starting in uh, October 6, only the residents who have ATCs, I mean the owners, and residents of El Dorado and La Ventana de Mar las Villas can come into the seaside with ATC vehicles or off-road vehicles, but you have to stop, please, the customer service office to get a sticker for your vehicles. Many of you have already done that, so you don't have to worry, but whoever doesn't have done it, please stop with Selena or Lolita, they will be happy to assist you. If not, the security people, even if they know you forever, they will stop you and say, please go to customer service. So we let you know ahead of time. The eighth point is collection effort. We keep working hard. Um, EDR, it's uh, making good. We are in the last stretch of the year, which is becomes less in this uh, collection, but we still are trying very hard. La Ventana del Mar is low. We are 15 down percent than last year. So I encourage the owners of La Ventana del Mar, whoever who is the delinquent, to pay their dues because that's the money we will we work. Okay. The next one is projects. In the projects in EDR, the Pergola number four is finished. Right now we are doing another Pergola for the heat pump and the new um, gas uh, burner that we bought this year. Uh, we were looking at them and there's so much sand that it can damage the, the machine. So we decided to make a pearl over them. Presumably taking account all the safety issues, we read the manuals and there is a gap that has to be kept between the burner and the top of the of the pergola so it can move air and it doesn't catch fire etc etc but we have done all that and we have been checking all that another thing that we finish completely is the tennis court number four is done that was done from scratch again 
Right now we have the four courts in good condition and we uh, finished to the central tennis court which used to be the pickable court at EDR. Right now all of them are tennis courts so we have a tennis center and we have a pickable center in La Ventana del Mar. So I think so that's uh, a goal that has been uh, followed for three years. Right now we are done and it is in very good condition. We will see in the slideshow how we have done the work. You can judge by yourself. Another thing that I want to communicate, we already ordered some lounges for La Palapa Pool. They are arriving uh, around October 15. It takes a long time to bring them, but they are finally arriving. Give us one week between, because uh, that all depends on us. Uh, storms and road maintenance. Well, you know now that Rosa is coming. It's very close. It is uh, expected to come into San Felipe between Monday and Tuesday. Uh, it will bring a lot of water. Uh, there are 10 assistant places in San Felipe in case of emergency and people have to move out. I don't know if you know this, but in San Felipe there are like 50 very dangerous areas where people is living. So maybe they, if there is a need there, some of them they will have to be evacuated. And there are already 10 places where they can go. The most knowledge for you, maybe that you know, is the rowing team building. They can go there. The, the camp uh, school, which is for uh, the children with special uh, disabilities. So uh, this is, they have 10. And today the authorities of Mexicali, they are getting together to implement the urgent or urgency response teams in San Felipe. So this is they being taken care very seriously. Um, I advise you to be careful if you don't have to travel to Mexicali in those days, don't do it. Because there will be plenty of water in the roads. Uh, it's erratic. Rosa stays here today, the next day is here, the next day is back here, so you have to be careful. Uh, we will have a slide in the, in the uh, presentation when we can see the, what, how is it going. Uh, it's the first one we have had this year or maybe in three years. So uh, the other ones have been deviated to the Pacific, but we will have to confirm this one. Our team of uh, Workers in the ranch, they are ready to start working as soon as the water stops. So, this is the information about Rosa. Please be very, very careful. This is what I have in the agenda. Now I am going to the slide presentation. As always, we will go to the front. So we are avoiding the deterioration in the middle of the roads. 
Next please. Very sure that saves money and time. Uh, this is how the work is final. This person told us to, to not finish uh, totally the roads because the cars will finish that and will be ever better than if we do it the way we used to do it. So now we are doing that and they are very coming good. Next. Uh, this is a map. I have received a lot of commentaries. Roberto, what are you doing with the roads? No, I haven't seen the machines in the roads. All these marks in yellow, this is red one. All the marks in yellow are the roads that we have been working during this year. So you can see that we have covered almost 60% of all red one, which is not bad. Next one, please. Radio 2, same thing. You can see that we have done the main roads all the way up and down in each section. And there are areas, for example, here, or certain areas here, for example, that there's not, maybe one, is because nobody lived there. So why do we do the roads and spend money and spend time and spend our machines if nobody lives there? They are called the sacks, maybe. So, uh, we do the main roads, the leaves and all that, so that people can move from one side to the other side and keep where the people is leaving the roads in the best condition as possible. Next one, please. The several posts of CFE are carrying in this condition. We have called them once and two and three and one hundred thousand times and they don't show up. For sure, if you don't pay your bill, they will be there next minute. But when we call them sometimes, they don't answer. So we decided to reinforce the post and forget about it. This is not a big expense, but it adds a lot of uh, safety to our workers, to our residents. This is the entrance to uh, EDR. Here you can see the accounting buildings. So if this one falls down, it can hit the building in customer services or the, where human resources is working with. So, we decided to do this. So right now, I think it will last more than anyone they have. Next please. We installed two new LED lamps on Saltito Road. Um, we don't have the picture here, but I have been receiving a lot of commentaries for two years, I have said that, about the lights that come from Highway 5 to the customer service building. We added all those lights to right now all the road from number high, highway number five to the customer building, customer service building are there. So we have lights and we have totally lighted area there right now. Next please. Uh, this is the same thing. We have uh, the lights here and this is an entrance where we install one of them. Next please. As you can see in the summer, uh, in the past uh, town hall, we start doing this. Right now, all the gates have easily handled rope because uh, they got so hot that our guys get uh, blisters sometimes. Next, please. Uh, we insulate the roof of the accounting office. We have to do this from time to time. But in that way, Rosa will not go into, into the, <laughs> the computers and all the inside the building. Next. Uh, the Office uh, of Human Resources has a very old wood stair going into the office. So we replace, we replace it with an iron one, metal, with very good steps. So right now, anybody who goes to us for work, is safe and the employees too. Next. Uh, this is uh, the monitoring gate, okay, is the one which is right in front of the entrance of to Laventana del Mar. So just across the, the street where we built the new tower in the last three months. We added this because we are going to put a reading gun for IDs and the computer is going to be right here. So, as you can see, we are trying to improve our um, IT uh, power, let's say, so we can make it faster for the people to come in, even if they go by this gate, because we have the reader for the gates in the 
or they uh, remain in trance. Next please. Uh, this one happened, one of our residents uh, had a problem with his car. He lost control and he hit this side of the building in customer service, provoking damage. And we take it out of the park, we fill it up, and right now it looks like this. Here they were given the finishing, so this white is not there. Next please. Uh, this was a water company cover. It was damaged. Some people have fall down on it. So we decide to make it too. We will not wait for them any longer. And this is not, uh, I prefer to make it than having an accident, which can be very, very hard for one of our residents. Next one, please. Uh, one of the requests that I received during one of the town meetings was to make a storage for the umbrellas of the owners wants to bring to the uh, Cachanilla swimming pool complex. So there is it. They put their own uh, lock, which is with the combination numbers. So they can put their umbrellas in, they can take them out. And there is uh, a guard in the, in the door who can be watching. For sure, the responsibility of each umbrella is that one for the owner. Next, please. Uh, we renovated the size of the Catalina pool area with rules so that people can read them. I uh, usually see the people just walking by. They don't even turn to see them. But when they arrive to the gate, we tell them the rules again. Uh, the guy who was the, at the gate for many years, who was David Quintero, he decided to leave the company, the HOA, I mean, and right now he retired. So he is enjoying free time at last. But uh, at the pool, we require that the people get to know the rules. So for the pool, next please. This is what I mentioned: the pergolas have been in construction. Uh, we are starting right now the, the pergola, which is going to be for protecting the heater pump and the, uh, the burner. Next please. This was a work of four years. These grids were brought originally from Spain, uh, but nobody knew who sold them. So we made contact with several uh, pool suppliers and requested them to find a manufacturer of these uh, grids. Finally, we found it. They are not cheap, but right now we have all them installed around the jacuzzi. And we are already the own part of the main pool at Cachanilla. We will be keeping doing this. As I say, they are not cheap, but they look very nice again. Uh, the only bad problem is that the sun and the chemicals affect them. Next, please. Here is the uh, new grids in the lab pool. This is like they were. Right now, this is like they look now. Next, please. We added handicap handles at the jacuzzi showers so the people can hold on while they are washing their feet or whatever. So, right now they are there. Next, please. This is what I say to you. Uh, the new rain pack water here, which I call the burner, is this one, which was probably the... This was the old one, this is the new one. So this is the condition it is, this is the condition it is after five years with the sun on top of it. So we are going to protect this one. Next please. This is the number court for tennis, number four tennis court. Uh, we repair it, we took all the windscreens, we took all the posts that were uh, rusted or broken or whatever. Uh, we change them, we rebuild them, and then we put the windscreens back. For the next year, we are going to buy two sets of windscreens. So we will start right now finishing in all the look that is necessary. Uh, this is the condition it finished, so I can say it's really, really good condition. Next one, please. This was a pickable conversion filling the holes that where the nets used to be. 
and the dividers and then same thing taking all the windscreens out starting to work in all the cracks and all the things that we have to repair before starting the final process. Next please. Here they were already painted the white lines. We have to paint the first we give a base of a product, it's like a tar. Then is the blue paint, the green paint in the outside, and the lines are the last ones. And for sure we'll repair all around the posts and the fence that were damaged. Next please. This is how it looks now. You can see the one in the center looks very, very, very impressive right now. And this is how it is ended up. Next please. Uh, this is repairments that we have done. Radio 3, the air compressor got broken, so we have to install a new one. Next. Water took over 2007 chases maintenance. Maintenance. As I say before, in other times, we take everything now, we take the tank out, we prime and then paint all the chassis and then we install the tires, we, we prime the tank and we paint it, so our trucks try to be as when we bought it. Next please. This is the International 2007, uh, the chassis broke, so the water weight is heavy, very heavy and the water moves, even that we have separators inside the tanks, the water moves. So the water movement broke the chassis, so we, what we did is we weld it, and then we weld a plate of uh, uh, iron on top, and then we bolt it out. So it's going to be very hard to be broken again. Next, please. The back hole, two, piston, two pistons broke down in the back, they were replaced, right now it's back at work. Next. Back hole, two new tires installed. They were out, you can see them right here in the back. Uh, this one is the one in the back, sorry. And this one is the new one. Next, please. The Grand Cherokee that used Montano for his inspections in all around the ranch for uh, TRC purposes. Broke down the engine, it has been repaired a long, long time ago. Right now it's in good condition again to work for at least another three to five years. Next. Ecology trailer, we bought two new tires. Uh, the other ones were in semi good condition, we just bought two. Next. You can see that they were then almost to the point that a mosquito can punch them. So uh, when we saw that, they say, hey guys, you have to tell us before this happens. So right now they have two new tires. Uh, sorry, this is a, the ecology truck. The ecology truck, they have these two like this and say, guys, you are moving this car, be careful. So we changed two, two, truck, two tires there. Next. Uh, for We washed all our units, the trucks, the vehicles in maintenance, vehicles in security. And we have a fleet of 28 uh, bagels right now, so we, we buy them, we wash them, so we don't pay anything for that. Next. Uh, new water coolers for the gates and for the tennis courts and several areas, so we bought six of them. Next. This is a kit that our security people has all, all the time in their cars. This is when they assist an emergency, medical emergency. They are prepared to assist the people. Next. Security. Security cable for programming our radius. This is the gun that I say that we are going to install in the um, gate across the Laventana Marin Trans. Uh, Flashlight switch, which is for the lamps that we use at night. Water cooler bulbs. So we don't, when the bulb doesn't work, we just change it and we still use the, the water tank. Next, water cooler. Uh, right now, as I said in the last town hall, we are maintaining our infrared system. We bought photocells, photocells chargers, and we are checking, we already have a routine of checking the photocells uh, in the infrared system. We recharge them and then we put them back into where they have to be. This is done daily. 
and it's a very fast process. We keep that to keep this the ranch as safe as possible. Next. Uh, steel insecurity radio batteries. You can see the, how they end. These are the new brand ones. And this is a flashlight recharge for white gate. This is in the end of uh, Toyon Road. I mean, no, uh, El Saltito Road. At the end of El Saltito Road. Radio battery charger too. Next. Security, same thing in the, in the, in the summer. The wheels are hot as iron sometimes. So we provide steering wheel covers and the three car mats so the carpet in the cars stay there, doesn't wear out. Next. Emergency lights in security vehicles, three and number five. They arrive right now, they are installed on layer. Next. Uh, security vehicle number six, tailgate replacement and uh, security vehicle number four door handle. This is because of the damage that the cars perform at usage. They, they stay working shifts of 12 hours for 24 hours a day. Next. This is the last car we bought for security, new security vehicle Tacoma 2010. You can see here in the back end of the right side, the last false wagon that we used to have in our fleet. We keep it because it's in good condition still, but it's not a car for the work we do. So we are keeping it for replacement when one of our units has to go to the, to the shop. And this is used by administrative personnel in security. Next. We do a training in night firefighting which was very good. The fire people, fire department from San Felipe come to provide the training and our uh, fire uh, fighters here at the ranch took the training. You can see they were equipped with ga gas and everything, oxygen I mean. And they have their suits. We have a very good supply of suits right now. Next please. Uh, we have been training our people constantly. Uh, we know that sometimes we have fails, we have problems, there are complaints, but we are in a program of training our people. This is Tourism Guide Seminar. This is a seminar that was given to our uh, activities people. At this time, three of our guys took the training, and they are right now, uh, they make an examination with the tourism office and they were approved. So right now we have three registered uh, tourist guides in the Department of Activities. Why do I decide to do this? Because we make trips to the wine country, we make countries to the desert, we go to the pools in the desert. So right now our people is trained to do that. They were doing a good job, but now they can do a better job. So this, is, this was in Mexicali. It was a very slow, low, low cost of 200 pesos per person. And when they come to the ranch to make the, the examination of the three guys we send there, they train another two guys that we have here. So right now the, we have three registered guys and the other two guys already presented the examination. They are waiting for the results and I am sure they are going to be approved and we'll have a crew of five tourism guy uh, producer. Next please. Same thing, uh, our, our pool people, this is Nico, the supervisor of uh, La Ventana de Mar, and this is uh, Marcos Lopez, who is the supervisor of uh, EDR, and they took some of, our, of his, their guys to take the seminar Painter is the equipment we use to maintain and do the work in the pump, uh, work in the pump room and the uh, different machines that we use and equipment we use for the pools. So another good thing is that we have a direct contact with Painter. Anything that our um, workers in the pools need, they can call Painter for sure in working hours. And they receive assistance from a Spanish-speaking guy, so we can solve 95% of the problems very, very fast. Only when we have to replace parts of machines 
or equipment, then we have to do it. But right now we have a very good backup. This was uh, done very well, who helped us, and this was Bob Miller, and we was a supervisor in the DDR. Next. Kotoko Teamwork Seminar. Same thing, this was done here in San Felipe. This was for free, but we sent several of our guys, you can see them sitting around, and uh, we are uh, trying to do that our crews work as one man. When we give an instruction, everybody understands it, or at least that's what we try. Next. This was a very interesting seminar. Uh, Ricardo Perez, who is a manager of operations, went to this seminar. Is private security as a reference to all national level. So this was a seminar that was proving that in Baja California the private security has reached a very good level. So it shows like a parameter at national level. You can see that there was a big assistance. There were several uh, speakers and uh, people who has big companies across the country. There was the representative of the state of Jalisco in the Secretary of Security, Public Security of Jalisco and there was the Secretary of Public Security of Baja California. So there was people of very high level and it was a very good seminar. We are inviting, or we are trying to bring the guy, one of the guys who was a very good uh, speaker, uh, for sure, we have to deal with the money, but what we are going to do is try to make a trade. Uh, if not, if it is not possible, then Ricardo will do a uh, booklet to make that seminar briefer, because it was big, big. So we can provide the information, that, the main information that he got about private security for our guys, supervisors like that. Next. This is activities we bought for equipment, a DVD Blu-ray player, new one, so you can enjoy right now the highest quality in the pictures that are shown in the pavilion. We bought a portable speaker for the pool and for events, an HMDI converter for movie nights, which uh, helps too with the Blu-ray and all that. Next, please. Activities, the uh, repairment of their car. Uh, this was already very hard work. So we repaired the transmission and we had a new battery. So this car is still going for another five years at least. Or until we have to change in accordance with our uh, turnover cars so to keep them the best way possible. Next. Activities, belly dance and Latin dance classes. The guys are trying to keep uh, inventing or the, developing new activities. Blind volleyball, water donation to San Felipe. This is another of the activities they participate in making the needed assisted, in this case, with water. You can see they were in the school here, providing water to the girls and boys. And here they are providing to the poorest area of San Felipe. And here you can see your donations and the help that you have provided to make this happen. Thank you for being that generous to San Felipe. Next. Activities, Cornhole Tournament, Diving Movie La Palapa, Employees Fire Day Celebration. This is something that our employees receive with a lot of joy and they are very thankful to the HOI for providing this to them. Uh, Jumbo Jega Kids Game at La Palapa. The kids have a big, big good time. Next. Hot dogs eating contests. This is always a line there. <laughs> Labor Day were volleyball, Monday short golf tournament, and night volleyball and potluck. Next. That was EDR. Now we go to La Ventana del Mar. Next, please. New flags. Uh, with the strongest wings we are having, they get destroyed very fast. They last one month. We, we are lucky one month and a half. Uh, we have to be changing them very often. But they look very nice. Very, very nice. <coughs> Next. Okay. No off 
vehicle sign. This is already posted in the entrance. And it's going to stay there so we don't have all the problems we used to have in the past. Uh, next, please. Perimeter perimeter repair. This was rusted, so we have to change it and we prime and repaint it. This is in the entrance, or by the exit side of uh, La Ventana del Mar, going from inside to the Highway 5. Next, please. This is a problem we were having very often. It's incredible, but the people keep cutting the chains or breaking the, path, the locks uh, in the beach. They want to come in at any time, they, they get uh, uh, scissors and they cut it. And we were buying chains, and we were buying locks. So what we decide to do is right now everything is going to be in this box. So there is a lock, we can open it, we open the gate. And we don't have to be buying chains and locks. So it's incredible, but it happened. Right now we, this is the beach gate and this is the, the big gate at the right side of the small one. Next, please. These are the Nepal Locks Masters, so are one of the better ones that are in, available. Next. Uh, this is the season for palm pruning. We have done all the main trans and we're, this is going to the beach. We keep it going until we finished. Next, please. This is the entrance to the pool. We repaired it. It was already rusted. With the humidity of the pool and from the sea, it gets rusted very fast, but we keep it uh, as best as possible. Uh, we have been working very strongly in the cleaning of all the areas. That includes EDR. Lately, we have been going with uh, Marcos Lopez in EDR and with uh, Nico in Aventana del Mar. They are checking the gardeners, all the lines, everything. Everything has to be neat. Next, please. This was at the Palapa pool. This part was broken and it was very becoming dangerous because the people can break an ankle there. So we repaired it with cement. It looks like this right now. Uh, we could not match the color, it was going to be impossible. But we mark like they are marked the other ones, so it looks similar. Next, please. Breakers boxes painted at Lapa Lapa. They were in this condition. Right now they are like this. We are in the process of putting these cables into a, a pipe, so it is protected. Next. Water leak repair at uh, 9,559. Uh, this is happening very often right now, but we go and fix it as soon as, soon as possible. Many of the leaks are repaired by CESPO because they already received those areas. The ones that they don't repair, we are the ones who repair. Next one, please. This is another one. Here you can see that it was needed to make a, a dig, a deep dig. Here is the repair line. Here is when they are changing everything and new, new pipes. And this is the end of the work. Somebody can recognize its home by, by the same, same that. Next, this was done by CESP. You can see the guy from CESP here. This is the uniform from CESP. Next, please. Water leak repair circle in the number in the circle number one. In that area, it was broken. We fixed it. Next, please. Sewage plant connector replaced. This was an old one, and this is a new one. This is a need that we have to do when they broke. We have to. Put new ones. Next, please. Uh, I explain all of this. May, maybe it seems like a little thing, but it takes time and it takes money. So that's what we explain and we present it so you know what we are doing. Las Villas. Next, please. The sterile nose maintenance at Condo 70 and 75. These were the conditions they were. This is like they do right now. Next, please. Condo 34, parking space repair. We added, uh, this was getting broken. So we fix it, we make it uh, like this. And now it's not going to get broken again. Next, please. 
BS number one fence, pool number one. Maintenance, we paint all the fence again, so it's in good condition. Next. AC train system, solid conduct 33 dash 3. Uh, some of the lines from the ACs, they were falling in front of the garages, so they made slippery, they made it dangerous, things like that. So right now, originally they were done like this before. Right now we are installing them into the walls so they don't look bad from the outside. The most we can. Next, please. New batteries for a water truck, Kenworth 1986 and a green Toyota Tacoma of maintenance. Next, please. Okay, this was a repairment of the pump room in pool number two. There was a water leak and there were some uh, damage in the walls and things that we have to redo. Uh, so we, you can see that in the past we bought this water heater. So right now it looks like this again. It's okay. Next. Water leak in repairing front of condo 28. This is uh, done by us. Uh, this was when it was broken. Right now it's fixed and it's back to normal. Next please. Water leak repair in front of condo 44. The same thing. This was when it was broken. This is fixed. And this is the damage it uh, can cause sometimes. Water damage. Next. Water leak repair in front of condo number 9. Same thing. Water leaking. We are fixing that. Next, please. Water leak repair in front of condo 14. You can see a lot of water leaks right now because the condos have like at least 12, 14 years old. So things get rusted, things get old, and they get broken. Right now we are fixing all of this and they will stay good for years too. Next. We found a leaking in one of the pools in number two. Uh, it was a big leak. We worked very hard to find it because we couldn't locate it. Uh, the water line was under the building. That was making it very hard to find it. So when we finally Thinking, going to the place, making little holes to find out, we found where the leak was. So we decided to make a new pipeline outside of the building. Right now you can see this is the, if you are looking into the front of the pool, this is the left side. And this area is the back, which is, this is the back. This area is this one. So we put all the lines, this is from the front to the back and then all the way down behind the, the building. So right now, if anything leaks happen, we will detect it immediately. We will have to work breaking walls again or making holes or whatever. Right now, it's going to be very easy and fast. Right here, you can see we have to take out the inventory, we have to break the back of the toilet, we have to dig all around, but next please, here is finished and we put another water control, a master control, so we can detect if it is from the main or is it after here. It's easy to find out. Next, please. Painted buildings that we painted it during this, uh, uh, from June to here, Condo 39, Condo 67, and Condo 77. Next, please. Roof repair at Condo 11. Next. Roof repair of condo 153. Next. And roof repair at condo 51. Next. Roof repair at condo 234. Next. And that's the end of the presentation. I just want to, to say something about the roof repairs. Right now we have only three more to repair. Rosa is coming. So now we are going to see because we haven't repaired the whole roofs. We have been repairing with the owner reports. I have a leak in here, I have a leak in there. So we go and fix it. Because uh, we don't have to have enough frame to find out if there are more. But if we, after Rosa, for sure we will know if we have more. 
or that's it. Right now we have only three to go. This is the presentation about EDR, La Ventana de Mar, on Las Vegas. Now, thank you. Thank you. I want to stress that all this work has been possible because of all of you who are paying your dues and let us work. Thank you. Now I open the floor for questions. So if you will please come to the front, I will make notes. Good morning, my name is Sammy Asper. I have two quick things. One, the Cachania pools. Uh, they look very good, thank you. There's a place in the back corner for smoking. But there are no signs at all around the pools themselves for people to know that there is no smoking by the pool. I go there every day and I have to go and say the guard to come and tell people. So it would be nice if we have signs around the pool saying no smoking. The second thing is, <coughs> concerns the HOA and the individual trust. My understanding is that uh, people who are in the master trust the HOA pays their annual uh, fees. If that is correct, people who don't have properties in the master trust, we have three properties, two of them have individual trusts, one of them is in the master trust. So why are the HOA or people who have their own individual trust the same as people whose uh, property is under the master trust? I think we're paying double this way. Very different. That's what I suggest the people to call directly with Juan Manuel Perez. He is the expert here. So if I say something that is not 100% accurate, that will be a problem later. So Juan Manuel is the guy to call. He will explain in detail all the questions, all the differences, because I am not the master of that. Okay, thank you. I know one very well, so yes. I'm going to... Yes, please. Uh, any, this is my recommendation. Please call one moment. Okay. You have any doubt. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Tony Cuevas. I've been here, living here for 13 years now. I live in Bottle of Villa, the North Number 2. And I'm here 24-7. I don't leave this place because this is my home. But I have a question. I've been, I read the... Uh, Newsletter, the Elder Rod uh, newsletter the other day. And I want to find out from yourself, Roberto, or maybe some of the supervisors here can help me on the initiative about the Val Dahmer initiative about uh, keeping people, renters, or short term renters, or long term renters who are renting on this side, on the seaside, about uh, they won't be able to use uh, La Canchania pool. Now, is that also, does that include that they can't use the pool in order to use, uh, to do volleyball or do water aerobics? Is there, what is the reason behind that? Okay. Uh, first of all, let me explain a briefly. The residents and owners, their visitors, I mean family, they are allowed to go to the catch an Indian collapse. They don't have any problem. They will have, as always, passes, which we will receive like visitors, and they will go. The renters, one of the problems that the initiative presents is that nobody foresee the number of people that was going to come down to rent in El Dorado. At the time the complex was done, there were not as many condos being rented. The numbers that the people used to manage at that time were from the traders, were right from the beginning of the rental opportunities. But right now, there are almost 200 units in rent. And one of the problems is that the property management companies has been increasing the number in beds in the houses and in the condos. And I have stressed that to the property management companies because I have been receiving commentaries from them saying to me, Roberto, we have three rooms, but we can put uh, beds in the living room, or I can put 
two or three units of beds, like a uh, bottom on floor. And I say, you know, guys, this, that's not the intention. The intention is that the people come and enjoy a nice time in El Dorado, but let the other people who live here, in any side, be happy and enjoy the living that they both out. Because I have been, if you remember, people tend to forget what they told me. Roberto, there are 50 people in one of the condos. And then I was, I was playing. You have to do something. Yes, we did. And we control that. We did. There are still some people. And yes, I can see heads moving like saying no. Well, remember that some people rent three or four condos or three or four houses. I cannot do nothing. They, they just get together for a carne asada in one of the four. I don't have control over that. It's like if you invite your friends to your house and you invite 30 people. I will go say, you know, the limit of your house is four plus two, six people. I cannot say that. But in renting units, yes, I did. And I sent to the PM companies a sheet of paper saying, this is the limit of people that's going to be there. I am, they love me, I can tell you. They love me. I received trash back from them. But I said, look guys, this is not fair. So, uh, that's the main complaint. Another thing that people is complaining about not able to be using lounges, chairs, tables, because they are taken. So, no. now, I am not the judge. Remember, the HOA is the messenger. This is something that the resident presented. Now, now, is this is this already a done deal already? Is no, it, this okay. is going to be presented at the GA, okay. Okay. and it's going to be voted over there. Okay, because uh, I'm going to ask you this other question. Now, is that pool over here in the Palapa, is it heated? No, yet. Not yet, but it is going to be heated. It hasn't been heated for a long time. That's a plan. Yeah, because if it's going to be people using it in January, February, March, that thing's like, a, like an ice bucket. That thing is really cold. Yeah. So, you know. Yes. That's one thing that has to be done right in time. The many, one of the things is when the pools are more crowded is in the summer. Right. And in the summer, if we are talking about the tourism that comes from Mexicalians and other ones, they don't care about feeding the water. They prefer to go and get refreshed by the water because the heat outside is strong enough to be super striped or whatever. I think, I think you've answered my question because there's people Thank behind you. me. Uh, they might stab me in my back. So. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Okay, let me just answer to Shalom. Okay, David. 
in his ear? He has a right hand of Jorge. <laughs> so he will tell Jorge. And I will speak, and Ricardo will speak with Jorge about that. One of the things that, let me tell you, there's no way that the guy at the front gate knows who pays his dues or doesn't. That's why they request the ID card. The only way they know if you are paying your dues is showing your card and it says 2019 or 2018, whatever the year is. So that's what they have to see. It. If you already pay your dues, it has a sticker in the back, so you are allowed to come in. If it doesn't have it, well, you are not allowed. Even if they know you very well. There is people who have been here for longer than I have been here. But uh, strong people doesn't pay tools, so we have to check the IDs. Uh, we will have to do that, but I agree with you. Our new guy is there and he's uh, not totally uh, trained. It's not an excuse, we will train him. We will do. And the other thing is that when uh, David has been saying for years, I want to retire, I am done, I want to go on. Almost each time I went to the pool, I say, how are you, David? Get ready to retire. <laughs> so, one day he just say, okay, I am done. <coughs> so that's it, that's it. I have known David for many years, many, many years. He used to work with me in play club, in the hotels. So we know each other for a long time. It was not a fight when he went. It was a mechanical uh, retirement. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Rich Mockaby. I'm uh, in Los Padanos North. And I just wanted to clarify uh, about the Master Trust. I'm in the Master Trust. I filled out paperwork with Bill Burns a uh, while back. Uh, is there additional? You're saying I have to contact? Mexicali, in addition to what I've done with... Yes. First thing, I don't know exactly what Bill Burns' papers filled with you, filled up with you. So, I advise, Bill Burns is sales. Uh, Juan Manuel is the Comiesos department. So, I, I suggest you, it's just a call. If you are okay, we will tell you, you don't have to do nothing. If you have to do some paperwork, we will tell you, okay, this is what we have to do. And we will guide you step by step until everything is finished. And I call who? Who, who, who are you suggesting? One hundred pairs. You can go to the where girls in customer service. They will give you his email, and you can email him. And if necessary, I call. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, sir. Good morning. My name is Mike Miles. I live in Paseo del Sol. I have a short little request. Um, about six months ago, I received a response from the, uh, from the HOA website where you go and submit an electronic ticket uh, to have some repairs done or a complaint or whatever. Request for action. Pardon? Request for action. Request for action, thank you. Yeah. So I went online, uh, I think it was around last January or February, and I submitted a request for action. And last April, I received a reply that my request for action has been submitted in the queue for uh, to be completed. Well, here it is six months later, and my request for action has still not been completed. So I'll explain to you what my request for action was. Okay. As you drive into the Paseo del Sol entrance, uh, when you go past the guard shack, the road splits, you can go right or left, but right there in the middle, there's a, there's a nice wooden sign that tells you the directions to all the different subdivisions. Yes. Vista del Sol, Paseo del Sol, etc. Mm -hmm. Well, that sign is really old, the paint is peeled, it looks horrible. So my request was to have it repainted. Okay. And uh, what we've done, for example, in, in my block, on our block, was our block sign was all old and, and warped and chipped. So I had Arturo Gomez repaint and I have a nice block sign right where my block is. So that was done. I've seen also that Arturo Gomez has painted the uh, uh, Centro de Equestre uh, additions to some of the signs out in the back and the elliptical road and so forth. So I just wanted to mention it and say that A, it hasn't been cleaned up and B, it would be nice to have it cleaned up and C, if you're looking for somebody to paint the signs, Maybe you can contact Arturo Gomez. Okay, in the back 
writer is uh, Ricardo Perez. He already took notice and he will do that. Thank you. Welcome, sir. Hi, my name is Barbara Saunders and I'm at Porta del Sol. I just have a question about the offer of vehicles. Since they are not going to be allowed in the La Ventana area and they're going to be in a gated area behind links, are these ranchers allowed to come into El Dorado Ranch with their vehicles and run up and down the roads at the, in the ranch itself? Well, the decision of not making the, not permitting the people to decide was by the developer because the renters were going into the golf course with their pictures, destroying the greens, destroying the, everything. And for years this was happening. And we were talking constantly, the company and the HOA with the view property management companies. And they say, yes, we are going to take action. Yes, we are going to take action. Guess what happened? Never. So the developers say, no more because I don't want me spending thousands of dollars from the owners through the golf assessment and from the company for these people to come and destroy them. That's why that was the decision. In the mountainside, that was not decided like that because, as a matter of fact, the number of renters is a lot lower. A lot lower. And sometimes, I don't like to say these things, but for example, from my point of view in my office, sometimes when I go out, I don't smoke, so I just go to, to see the, the area. Uh, I see many people racing in our roads, and they are not visitors, they are residents. And sometimes when I am driving, I make this slow down, and then say, I don't want to talk. <laughs> so I can just joke and, and laugh and say goodbye to you, but we live here, we have to take care of where we live. That's why I start to stay. Well, my question is actually the renters from Montana who bring their toys, and they are going to now be parking in the fenced in area, correct? Yes. Okay, if they are a renter at Montana, and they want to take their vehicle out of that fenced-in area, are they going to be allowed to go into EDR and run their vehicles? Because in, even the renters over on EDR side do run their off-road vehicles through the green belts, and they fly past people's homes, and they're not safe. And so if these people are going to as well be allowed to go in there, because now they don't have a place to play with their vehicles, Yes, one of the things is, uh, it's incredible how the commercial cars are selling. Because for example, in the beaches they are prohibited, but everybody goes to the beaches. They are not allowed to go into highways, they are always between the highways. They should not be around downtown without helmets, they do it a lot. And sometimes the uh, authorities just say, okay, I won't see for a while because it's a big date and the people come up. And but the real thing is that more and more it is restricted. But the people likes and loves to go and buy those, those uh, toys. So the real thing is for years, for at least I think so 10 years, there has been a race track or I don't know what it is called, right next to when uh, property management was where the new guy with the internet. Uh, right. Yeah with the new services is SIMA. There used to be the office there. There was an area, it's like a loop where the overall vehicles used to go. Uh, nobody enforced that at that time, so it got lost in time. Even the property management forgot about that. So the people start running into La Ventana. Right now, one of the things is that to push them to go there, not going through the green belts, not going. We will mark that so the people know you can go here, you will not be disturbing nobody. But uh, the idea is no, you cannot go. Just, what's the reason to just go through all the streets where people live with your ATC at full speed and sending sand to everybody? That's not good policy. Okay, so is security going to keep them from entering the gates with their toys when they are a renter on this side? When, when they are here, here, yes. Over there, they have to go where they are renting. But we will rent them. When they cross the line, our security people
people will tell them, you cannot go through ring belts, you are not allowed to go into the streets, you will have to go slower, you just have to come in and come out wherever you want to go, but not in the range. What I'm finding is that that's going to create a lot of toy uh, congestion on the EDR side, especially on Saltillo Road and all the side roads of Saltillo because that's the area of the gate, um, of the fenced-in area. They'll go in that side gate, they'll play around in that whole area. Um, that can happen. That can happen. But we will be looking. Right now, we are just guessing. I know there's going to be abuse. There's always abuse. Right. But we will have to work very hard on that. Okay. We will be working on that. So you will figure out a way to control it? Yes, we will try. That's what they can say. Thank you. And then my other question that I had is about the master trust. Yes. Is there a way that we can have um, Juan Manuel Perez? Is that yes. correct? Yes. Is he, can he come and be a speaker for all of us on the trust? what is expected of us with the Feeder Community Self Board. That's a very good idea. We can do that in the GA. Because there's a lot of very questions. Close. A lot of questions. And there's uh, going to be a lot more people who usually is not here during this time of the year. Right. That's a good idea. Let me write it And if there's a possibility that if we do have to sign up for something that they might have a little seminar for that, for us to do that? Let me talk with him. Okay. I, I, as a matter of fact, I was uh, talking with him yesterday. And, uh, but neither he or I got this good idea. Okay. This is a very good idea. Okay, thank you, Rubio. Thank you. You're welcome. No charge. No, we will not charge for a talk. It's funny. He is, uh, he is working with the company. He will not charge him. Thank you for waiting us. Thank you. Ross Wilkin, Vista Del Mar. Uh, I'd like to take a moment, if I may, to address the issue on the Chachania uh, pool. Uh, I'd like to begin by reading part of the proposed initiative for those that haven't seen it or are not familiar with it. It is proposed that effective Tuesday, January 1st, 2019, the use of the Chachania pool will be restricted to property owners and those renting a home at El Dorado Ranch only. This area is commonly known as the mountainside. The reasons for this that are listed is that the number of people occupying rental condominium units usually exceeds the normal occupancy unit of units. Most of the security violations and deliberate destruction of not only condominium units, but the common area as well, comes from those renting a unit. The majority of renters of La Ventana Del Mar units are currently using the mountainside Eldorado Ranch pool. This pool is commonly known as the Chachania pool. The Chachania pool was built and paid for by the Eldorado Ranch Homeowners Association. The maintenance and security of the pool area is supervised and paid for by the Eldorado Ranch Homeowners Association. The elimination of renters will return the pool to the people that paid for it and maintained it. That's the initiative as it is. I am adamantly opposed to this initiative, but I feel that some problems do exist. But those problems exist for less than 30 days a year, and, less, and, and yet we are proposing a 365 day a year draconian, somewhat racist in my opinion, solution. The ADR, the ADR mountainside property owners most certainly have the right to vote on it solution to existing problems. I personally welcome our Mexican, American, Canadian, and international visitors to use all of the EDR facilities and be allowed to see and experience the wonderful life we live here at the ranch. However, I do recognize the legitimate concerns this initiative tends to resolve. As is the democratic process, I felt voters deserved more than one choice. To that end, I proposed and submitted to be entered on the November ballot, along with the other initiative, a less drastic solution that does not have as much potential to be considered racist. I disagree with your statement you made just a few moments ago that the HOA is not 
just he is not just a messenger and he should put forward to the group things that we propose however my initiative was not allowed to be submitted to the mountainside owners to vote on the committee members which consisted of nobody who ever uses the pool uh, took it upon themselves to turn down my initiative without checking back with me with their reasons and it will not be presented on the ballot therefore not giving a choice to our ranch owners and I quote the reasons that it was turned down. The initiative is similar to one already on the ballot. Are you kidding? That's exactly what an initiative is. They have Prop A and they have Prop B. Two different proposed solutions to the same problem. So of course it was similar to the initiative that was already on the ballot. Number two, your initiative would be too difficult to enforce. Translation. Our security, swimming pool, and activity staff that make up the largest portion of our HOA budget are unable, unwilling, unable or unwilling to do their job. This excuse comes up at every HOA meeting when security or enforcement issues are raised by others. Though I dismiss both these reasons for denying uh, property owners a choice. I wish to request the opportunity to reissue my initiative proposal with modifications eliminating the two excuses given for turning down my first submission. I feel number one excuse need not be further addressed as it's not a legitimate reason. Written in the manuals I have until September 30 to submit a proposal for an initiative. Uh, initial, September 30th. That's why I'm bringing this up at this meeting. I just got notification yesterday that it had been, den uh, been denied, even though I turned it in three weeks ago. So I'm requesting formally the opportunity to turn in a, a revised initiative that you may have the opportunity to look at it and that you may decide whether we have the right to vote in November. Thank you. Send it to the rest of the people because we have to send the mailing in the written test. 
uh, thing to me. It was told that I had until September 30, and you needed the uh, proposals before then, so you had time to review them so they could be in the next newsletter. You could not tell me this meeting took place on the 26th, three or four days ago, that because of those, and then I got a notification yesterday. You cannot tell me that now suddenly there's not time for you to look at it again and publish it in next month's newsletter. Now I'll go on since you've got me angry. Oh, no, no, okay? I don't say I'll, I'll, I'll outline in front of everybody what my proposal is, and if you want, and if, you know, if you want to make your decision then in front of everybody. That's fine with me. No. Okay. Then allow me to submit it since it's not September 30th yet. Well, okay. Now let me talk. First, I am not saying that you cannot submit it, that, that I, it has not to be published in the newsletter. I didn't say newsletter. I said we have to send the information through Concord for all the people, and that's in the rules and regulations. People have to receive the information when we send all the paperwork from Concord with the new budget and the new situations that are going to be discussed or presented. At the you have to revise the website then because it doesn't say that. I specifically read it. In the website it said it's impossible to send this out to everybody. Therefore, we need it in time to publish in the newsletter. That's all it says. It's in your own website under resources. Yes, but we are talking about two different things. Yeah, okay. So the answer is no. No, you can submit it. Submit it. And will it get a fair hearing? Will it get a fair hearing? Yes, why not? Well, that could give a lot of reasons why not. Thank you. You're welcome. Good morning. Uh, my name is Eddie Jones, for those of you that don't know me. It's been my pleasure to be a uh, supervisor for Mountain Science since the day one of the HOA. Now, I'm going to ask you forgiveness on two points. Number one, I've written all this out so I don't mess up any facts. Facts that can be cooperated and facts that are easily checked. Number two, I may have trouble reading it. I have gone blind in my right eye because of complications of cataract surgery. I, I will get through it, but I want you to listen carefully. Now, numbers are boring, but I'm talking about your money. Mr. Wilkin has taken a position opposing what others on the mountainside wish. He has called us racist and selfish. Now, I don't make up the following facts. I will report them. Now, prior to five minutes ago, there were four supervisors in this room that was present and serving as supervisors when these following facts occurred. Two HOAs were created January 1st of 2005. There's an EDR HOA and the La Ventana Del Mar HOA. Las Vegas is not an HOA. It's part of La Ventana. Now, first of all, there's been talk of owner's rights being violated. You're damn right, that's true. But it's the owners of the mountainside whose rights have been violated. Their pool that they bought, paid for, and maintained has basically been taken away from them. Now, Ross says, well, the pools are empty 90% of the time. Pretty much he's correct, because my family, your family, and rivers all come down on the weekends, so that's when the pools are used. Now, from the very beginning, listen to this very carefully. From the very beginning, the HOAs, the EDR HOA, paid a lot of time HOA $360,000 a year just to use the block of tool. That's a thousand dollars a day. Every day for 360 days a year. That was just for the privilege of using that tool. The beach Juanita were public, available, so the 360000 was purely for EDR residents to use the Palapa tool. By the time we opened our pool, we paid La Ventana approximately $2.5 million just to use the pool. Now, a group of supervisors and I approached Cliff Altman, who was administrator at that time, for the ADEDR HOA to build a pool complex since the developer was, she was supposed to build it, couldn't do it. The owners 
and can approve the project. Now this is when the Commonado contract is created. I chaired that committee. For those of you who don't know what that is, the Commonado is TAP donating the property where the complex is now at tax free for both him and the HOA. Now, $1.5 million later, we have a pool on the mountainside at about $200,000 a year maintenance. Not one penny was contributed from Seaside. And that's fine, we didn't ask them to. It's our HOA on the mountainside decided we would do something for ourselves. Now, even though EDR paid about $2.5 million to use the Palapa pool, the committee, which was I was part of, declared that lot of time owners, Las Vegas owners, their families, their guests, and their long-time less, long-term lessees, not renters, could use the pool complex at no charge. Now that's pretty damn reasonable. Now, what that means is EDR could use the Palapa pool, Lavantana, Las Vegas owners, to use an outside pool. That's reasonable. Now, when the condo pools came along, the people on the mountainside, the non-condo owners, we can't go use those condo pools, but a condo owner can come use our pool. That's okay. We have a pool. We don't need to go to the condo pools. It's just a principle of the fact. Now, the first year our pool was open, the mountainside ER still paid about $50,000 the next year for propane for the Palapa pool because Palapa needs money. Now my problem with it is $360,000 a year is far in excess of what is required to maintain that pool. For our entire pool contract, we're spending about $200,000 a year. So $360,000, that's about $160,000 more that was needed to take care of the pool in an area much smaller. Now, the, the overcrowding problem is, is what's created all this. <clears throat> the mountainside owners have lost control of their pools on the weekends. Now, rental companies have been getting, for every condo they rent, they've been getting eight wristbands. And that means eight adults plus probably eight kids can come use the pool mountainside. Did you know if you need mountainside and you're an owner, you can only have four guests? Now who do you think overcrowded the goddamn pool? Now, when Roberto found out that, he corrected that. that he didn't know what was going on. Basically, in a rental property, it's supposed to be two best bands per uh, bedroom. Am I correct on that? Now, but the guy giving out the wristbands, for every condo rented, he's giving a wristband. And the best I can tell, there's about 104 condos out there. Both of them, there's 16. Or mountainside multiplied by four. What the hell have you got? You got overcrowding of people who did invest here, don't want to invest here, and you know what they paid for that pools? Thirty-five trillion dollars. Property management companies advertise on Facebook that they should bring air mattresses, and they can all get rich back. And that's no longer true. Now, the reservation fees that's been coming in is approximately $100,000 a year. We've been splitting that 50-50 between both sides of the highway until this budget. With this initiative, they're going to pick up $20,000 more. So they're going to keep $70,000, mountainside's going to keep $30,000. Now that's fair because they're going to keep a lot more rent. Now let me just give you some more numbers when I get off of here. 2014, there were 12,738 renters and 289 kids. 2015, there 
are 6,984 renters, 3,872 kids. 2016, 7,580 renters and 4,174 kids. 2017, 9,256 renters and 5,711 kids. Now, Val Dalton, who put in this uh, initiative, has been catching a lot of help from a lot of people. And I want to thank her as an individual and a former supervisor for protecting your life as an girl over there to have what you pay for and what you maintain. Thank you.
no garbage can out there. I see beer bottles, cans, whatever, thrown on the, on the road there. It just makes sense to have some cans put out. Okay, I'll take note of that. That's it. Thank you. I, I just want to apologize for allowing my uh, emotions to get in the way of the things that I Thank said. Thank you for that. Uh, I just apologize to you, the supervisors, and everyone that's here. Uh, it masked, unfortunately, my, my actual point. I'm not against at all the uh, submission of the other uh, proposal. In fact, I have all the utmost respect for Val and for the supervisors who are putting it forward. It shows they care about their community. I have no problem with that, although I wouldn't vote for it, but it belongs there. My issue was simply that I have an alternative proposal that some people may prefer over that proposal because it's less draconian. So my anger is that I cannot, or that it, that proposal was not allowed on the ballot. That's all. It has nothing to do with my disdain for the other proposal. And all the reasons presented for the other proposal are absolutely accurate. I know the numbers. I did a lot of study of them before I did this. And I, my proposal, especially the revised one, because again, I understand there were two issues in the previous one that would be near not impossible to enforce. Uh, those are small. Uh, and yet, the proposal still, I think, will accomplish, other than the fact that the, it doesn't belong to them, the issue, I can't address that, but it will address the over-occupancy on that 30 days a year that it occurs, uh, and it will address many of the other issues. So again, that's all I'm asking at this point, is that I can submit the revised proposal that only has two lines changed, that I think address your issue, and that it get a fair hearing, and hopefully that it's approved to be put on the ballot. That's I'm not asking you to vote for it, but that the rest of us get the opportunity to at least see it. They know what the first one is, they'll know what the second one is, and they'll have the the ability to vote no on both, if they wish, like I will, I'll vote no on my own, but they'll have an alternative to the one that's currently on the ballot. That's all I ask. Send it to me. Alright, thank you.
They would have five cars parked there. Which one? Well, it's on Road One, actually, uh, Mexicali and Mar Mariposa. It's a corner house. I don't get it. I don't know. What anyway, like I said, we saw this several times while we were sitting there leasing for six months. Send me a picture. With that, send me a picture and the address or whatever it is more to point me where it is, and we will act on that. Okay, great. Yep. Thank you. 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 Thank you.